Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today I've got another CRT monitor out of a CNC machine to fix up. This is a 9 inch CRT from a Dynapath Delta 20 CNC control. It's made by Elston and this is about 30 years old, 1985 I think is when the machine was made. And the circuit board is out, the adjustment uh, pots I removed, all I've done to the the CRT so far is just give uh, everything a good bath. It was just filthy. This machine sits in uh, a fab shop with a lot of welding and everything is just a mess. And the symptoms of this CRT are that it has no picture. There's no raster, no picture, no nothing. The grid heaters are on. I can see the, the heaters glowing at the back of the CRT tube. And I know that it has high voltage because I pulled the I pulled the high voltage lead out and shorted it to the chassis and it'll jump the arc so it's got high voltage and the grid is doing something but I have no picture and the board has a service date written on here 423 1990 so at the very least it's been 28 years since anybody's done anything to this board and I've gone through and done some checks. I haven't found any bad diodes. I haven't found any bad transistors. However, I found several electrolytic capacitors that are bad. Uh, there's a small one here that's actually open. And there's a few that have just really high ESR. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to replace all the electrolytic capacitors. And there are a lot of them on this small board. So. I placed an order with DigiKey and I'm going to go ahead and swap out all the electrolytic capacitors and we'll just go from there. Alright, let me show you just quickly how I how I determined that these capacitors were bad. So this is an ESR tester equivalent series resistance and it's it's uh, sold by Anatec Instruments. I actually bought it as a kit and assembled it myself. It costs about $85 and uh, it seems to work really well. So you turn the meter on you have to uh, calibrate the leads. So you just short the leads together. Hit the button again. Now we're zeroed out. And you can go ahead and test the capacitors. You can actually test them in circuit, although sometimes I have found that it doesn't work that well. And you actually have to take them out of the circuit to get a reliable reading. But let me show you uh, a couple here that I've I've determined they're bad. So this one here is reading 0.1 ohms resistance, which is excellent. Now let's check the one that's right next to it. See this one? There's there's no reading on the meter. So this small capacitor uh, right here is actually completely open. It's a 100 volt, 10 microfarad capacitor. And, uh, you know, 25 years, I'm just going to go ahead and replace them all. There's, there's no reason to trust these electrolytic capacitors after all this time. One thing I like to do before I remove any components from the board is just make a little map like this. This board's pretty good. It actually tells you uh, which, which side of the capacitors, the positive side, it's labeled on the board. Uh, but there's no values on the board. So, yeah, I just make a simple map like this and list the values and where the positive leg is going to be and then I can go ahead and desolder all of them at the same time. I'm using this Heiko 808 desoldering tool and it's got a one millimeter tip. This is a single sided circuit board so it's really easy to unsolder or desolder and uh, I've just put a little bit, a tiny little bit of this uh, RMA flux on any spot that I'm going to be desoldering just because it helps the solder flow a little bit better. And I've got my uh, gun turned down to the lowest setting. So I'm pretty new to these uh, desoldering guns, but I really like it. It's definitely the way to go. Uh, a few things that I've learned about it, though, 
you can cause a lot of damage with these guns if you're not careful. And one of the biggest things that you don't want to do is push too hard into the board. You don't need to do that. It's okay to give it a little wiggle. But if you press too hard into the board and then move the tip around, you can actually damage the damage the trace or the pad. Okay, that's it. Okay, I've completed the replacement of the electrolytic capacitors. So all of the caps have now been replaced with, with uh, new caps. And you can see there's, there's a pretty good assortment here in uh, you know, a variety of values. And these are all good quality capacitors. You know, these are name brand capacitors. They're just old. You know, this board is probably 35 years old and the design is possibly 45 years old. You can see, if we look at the back side, this is a hand-drawn pattern on this board. So uh, it definitely, you know, dates from, I would say the design of the board dates from the 1970s for sure. And it's a really well-made board. I had no problems soldering in the new components. It's just, uh, you know, an old-school way to lay out a, a PCB. So you can see just how how crusty some of these capacitors are. So uh, this one here, it's not bulging on the top, but the bottom, the bottom is bulging out. And then this one here, you can see it's it's bulged out and it's also leaking. So definitely an improvement to have new capacitors. Okay, so I reinstalled the uh, monitor in the in the CNC machine, and as you can see, it worked. No problems. I made a few adjustments to the settings, and this this uh, CRT should be ready to go for for many more years. These uh these CRTs are are pretty much bulletproof. The only problem is that they do get burn in, but with you can see this one's got some burn in here on the on the uh, glass. But it's not that big of a problem for CNC machines because normally the display is is static or you know there's just some some numbers counting down or up. You're not trying to watch you know a movie or anything on it. So yeah, everything's back together and cleaned up nicely. And uh, another job, another job done. Thanks for watching.